Okay, so we're going to have a look at a nice way to evaluate this nasty looking limit here using some tools from probability. So do have a go by yourself if you like, otherwise I'll show how you can calculate this using probability. So the main tool from probability theory that we need is the central limit theorem. And this basically tells you if you've got x1, x2, x3, and so on, so xk, if these are all, you call it iid, so independent of each other, identically distributed, so they've all got the same distribution, they're independent of each other. And if these have got a finite mean, we'll call that mu, and you also need to have finite variance, we'll call this sigma squared. Then if you add all of these up, and then sort of subtract the mean and rescale suitably, basically what you get is your sum, let's say we've got n of them, so your sum of xk minus the mean divided by sigma, the standard deviation, and then you also rescale by a factor of the square root of n. You sum all of this up. As n goes to infinity, this converges in distribution to the standard normal distribution. So we'll talk a little bit more later on when we need to about exactly what this convergence in distribution means. But basically, the plan is we're going to use some random variables, apply the central limit theorem, and hopefully we can evaluate this limit. So what we're going to use is the Poisson distribution. So just a quick recap, you say y is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda, where lambda is some real number greater than zero. Basically, this is just saying that the probability that y equals m is going to be e to the minus lambda multiplied by lambda to the m over m factorial, where m is some integer greater than or equal to zero. So what parameter are we going to use here for our iid random variables? We're just going to let xk be iid, the Poisson distribution with parameter 1. And this gives us quite a nice setup because a really useful fact about the Poisson distribution, so here y with parameter lambda, you know that the expectation of y, this is equal to the variance of y, and this is just equal to lambda. So this tells us that here our expectation of our xk's, this is just going to be 1, as is our variance. So we can say that mu is equal to 1, and also that sigma is equal to 1, or sigma squared is also equal to 1. So what we'll do is, in a moment, we'll have a go at applying the central limit theorem to this setup of Poisson random variables. Hopefully then we can evaluate this nice limit. So now to apply the central limit theorem, we need to know what this convergence in distribution means. This is basically telling us that for all values of x, the CDF of the sum is going to converge to the CDF of the standard normal distribution. So we're saying that the probability that your sum is less than or equal to x, this is going to converge to the probability that a random variable with the standard normal distribution is less than or equal to x. So we'll say z has the standard normal distribution here. So our limit of this probability is this. And what we'll do is we'll set x equal to 0 and we'll apply the limit. We can use the fact that sigma and mu, they're both equal to 1 to tidy things up a bit. So if we write limit as n goes to infinity, so now we're interested in the probability that the sum from k equals 1 to n of, it's just xk minus 1, now divided by root n. And we want this, rather than less than or equal to x, we're setting x equal to 0, so what happens to the probability that this is less than or equal to 0? Okay, so you could multiply both sides of the inequality by root n, that would help a bit, this just disappears. But then also we're subtracting 1, kind of n times there, so we add n to both sides of the inequality. This is all going to be equal to now the limit, so then goes to infinity of the probability, just the sum from k equals 1 to n of xk is less than or equal to n. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Well, we can use another really useful fact about the Poisson distribution. So let's just say you've got y mu is Poisson with parameter mu. We'll say that y lambda is Poisson with parameter lambda, where they're independent of each other. And this tells you that y mu plus y lambda, this is also Poisson with parameter now mu plus lambda. So this is a really useful property we can make use of here, because what have we got? We've got the sum of n independent Poisson random variables, and they've all got parameter 1. So basically all of this sum here, we'll say this is equal in distribution to yn, which is Poisson with parameter n, because you've just got the sum of n lots of Poisson random variables with parameter 1. So you can just add your 
parameters there because they're independent. So we write this now as the limit as n goes to infinity of the probability that yn is less than or equal to n. Then what I'll do is I'll write it in a slightly strange format. Rather than the probability that it's less than or equal to n, because it can only take integer values, this is the probability that it's equal to 0 plus the probability that yn equals 1 plus the probability it equals 2, etc., all the way up to the probability that yn equals n. Okay, so why have I written it like this? Well, let's not forget what is the probability that yn equals a certain value. So we still have the limit here. So the probability that it's equal to 0, this is e to the minus n, and then it's just multiplied by n to the power of 0, all divided by 0 factorial. Next one, e to the minus n, then it's n to the power of 1, or just n, divided by 1 factorial. The next one, the probability that's equal to 2, is e to the minus n, now n squared, over 2 factorial. And so on, keep adding all of these up until you get to e to the minus n, you've got n to the power of n, over n factorial. Okay, so this is starting to look familiar, hopefully. We can take out a factor of e to the minus n, so then you get the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the minus n, and then in brackets we've got n to the 0 over 0 factorial, that's just 1, n over 1 factorial, that's just n, and then we've got n squared over 2 factorial, the next one would be n cubed over 3 factorial, so on all the way up to n to the n over n factorial. Okay, so this is the original limit, and let's not forget what we're doing here. We, we're applying the central limit theorem, so this is telling us that our original limit, the limit that goes to infinity that our sum is less than or equal to zero, this is going to converge, if we set x equal to zero, to the probability that our standard normal random variable is less than or equal to zero. So this limit is just equal to the probability that z is less than or equal to zero, where z is a standard normal random variable. Of course, this is just equal to a half. This is symmetrical around zero. So what we've shown here is that the limit as n goes to infinity of all of this nasty stuff is actually just a half using the central limit theorem. It's a really nice application. And I think even though it's one of these kind of artificial problems that's sort of been set up so that you get a nice answer out of it, it does give us quite an interesting insight into how this series converges for e to the power of n for large values of n. If you imagine, if you wanted to calculate e to the power of n, and then you take the first sort of n plus 1 terms, is this going to be good enough? Let's divide this by e to the n, i.e. you multiply by e to the minus n there. So then, for really, really large values of n, what this is telling us is that this limit equals a half. So basically, if you take the sum, the first n plus 1 terms, to try and approximate the value of e to the n, it's only going to be about half of that size, so you need to take more terms. Which I think is quite an interesting little fact that we kind of get for free there once we've evaluated the limit.